JFC Fuller sits at his desk in the late hours of the night. Soon, the Allied powers will launch an attack that will hopefully push the German armies back into their homeland. Fuller is nervous. Germany had just launched a massive attack that nearly broke the Allies. Sir Douglas Haig's promises of breakthroughs beforehand were all words and no substance, and one of his new offensives was about to begin. He felt that for the war to be won, there needed to be a new tactic and a new way of thinking to break the deadlock. The tank would be his solution. He pulled out some paper and began to write what would eventually be known as Plan 1919, a theorized offensive for the British military in the new year. Fuller rightly pointed out that trench warfare was extremely tough to break. It had taken the German army three and a half years of fighting to move the Western Front again. There needed to be a way to smash through an enemy's defenses without losing thousands of men. He identified the tank as a possible tool and examined its use at the Somme, Passchendaele, and Cambrai. While the first two were not successful, the tanks at Cambrai proved that they could be effective with enough speed and shock value. Fuller argued that employing tanks with speed could possibly create a breakthrough or at least a gap big enough for their infantry to support. He then got to work and submitted his study. Plan 1919 contained three phases. Phase 1 would consist of aircraft and medium tanks that would bomb and make their way towards local German headquarters to prevent communication and coordination of reinforcements. Phase 2 would see waves of heavy tanks and infantry flood forward with the assistance of artillery to capture and neutralize enemy positions. These forces would essentially create a zone of British control that could lead to bridgeheads to further advance. Then, finally, Phase 3 would see cavalry, motorized forces, and light tanks chase the retreating German forces to present regrouping and give time for the first two phases to consolidate their gains. All of this would occur on a front of 90 miles, or 145 kilometers. He also argued that the relative flatness of the terrain in northern France would make the perfect area for such an offensive to occur. To summarize, Fuller's plan was a localized offensive that would smash through German lines with speed and continue to drive a wedge into them until they broke, causing a massive retreat or even encirclement. Tanks would be integrated into formations with some infantry. Still, others were meant to be spearheads, supported by artillery and air support. This was meant to be a fast and swift victory that left their opponents reeling, not able to reinforce their troops. This probably all sounds familiar, and you would be right in saying that it does sound like a lot of more contemporary military tactics. See, the twist here is that Fuller's plan was executed on the northern fields of France to near perfection, but it wasn't by the British. World War I ended before this could be used. Instead, Fuller's work was read by German commanders, and this formed the blitzkrieg tactics used by the Germans during their invasion of France in 1940, and it turned out to be a resounding success. But backtracking a bit, would Fuller's plan have worked? Let's ignore the fact that British industry was struggling to produce tanks in large numbers let alone the 5,000 tanks he called for. And let's also ignore that there were lack of manpower on the British side. In a perfect world where Fuller had all 5,000 tanks in how many men he needed, these 5,000 tanks would have to hit a 90 mile front. This is more tanks that would be used here than in the initial invasion of the Soviet Union during Operation Barbarossa a few decades later. This would be the largest amount of armor 
ever deployed in a single area, given the fact that the Germans were not equipped with many anti-tank weapons, I would say that this may have worked. Sure, the tanks back then were extremely unreliable, but even if 500 worked, this might have caused permanent damage to German lines. While German artillery could have knocked out those tanks, some would have inevitably made it through. Remember, the objective here with the tanks is not to have the tanks occupy an enemy zone, it's just to push through the lines to allow your infantry a better chance of solidifying your gains. It didn't matter how many tanks broke through, all that mattered is that some did. All in all, I would say yes, this plan may have just worked. Alas, it was never able to be used because Germany would collapse against the Allied offensives in that fall of 1918. But it's always just fun to think about, especially when this tactic went on to inspire one of the most brutally efficient military tactics in human history. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Lesser Known History. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.